Hello everyone, and welcome back to Broken Sword 2 The Smoking Mirror, Remastered Edition. And my name is Eric. We are currently in this, uh, this screen here, because I don't know if there's some timing with the game. Honestly, I don't know. We're playing as Nico on the Thames River. We have just locked a guard into the cupboard here. And what we need to do is, I think we need to have a little bit of a listen and look at stuff. But the collar woman was there. They'll know it was me. But you have the stone. The right stone, you're sure? Yes, of course, it's the Jaguar stone. No possible mistake. Here it is. Yeah, the comic book villain and all Can't that. Work. Please. The police will be looking for me soon. You're going to get me out of the country, aren't you? Stop your whining, UVA. Do you have any idea what this stone symbolizes? I thought you just wanted it to frighten the natives. Fool. I intend to cast this stone into the sea. But why? It's unique. Exactly. With it gone, the Mayan priest's plan to destroy Tezcatlipoca cannot succeed. I can assure you that Tezcatlipoca is a mythical figure. Such a small mind you live in. Tezcatlipoca is real. Okay. We've spoken of his plans for this world. We have He's spoken crazy. of your part in these plans. My part? He told me you would be useful. He told me how to crush your spirit by turning you to drugs. My wife, what? Uh, you know that full well. She was my world, my everything. And now? You are no longer useful. Oh boy. She called out your name as she died, you know? What? What are you saying? And then they thought you'd done it. It all worked perfectly. You? It was you? You bastard! You monster! For the love of God, Kazak! Which one? Oh boy. This explains a lot. Really. Oh shit. Oh boy. Well, this explains a lot what happened to Ubi's wife and everything. Well, Ubiye seems to be really dead. There were no signs of life, but I checked that Ubiye really was beyond help. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> well, we were let's... going to need the stone to thwart Karzak. I knew Ubiye would have approved. Yeah, he probably would. Just take that stone, Nico. We now it have... was the Jaguar stone, all right. Oh shit. And now Karsak has got us. Karsak, you're an asshole, and I'm going to stab you. Obsidian is ow, is sharp as fuck. Get out, Nico! Holy hell! <laughs> After battling through the jungle, George approaches the beach below the Pillar of Rock. When? What the hell? Pirate. Okay, this is a bit odd. I was about to make good my escape when... <laughs> Someone's not happy. Who the hell are you? Uh, I can explain everything. Don't bother. <laughs> we just entered a film set, it seems like. Okay. My goodness. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were making a movie. So who are you? Stobart, George Stobart. Uh... Two B's and two T's. It's okay, Mr. Hawks. He wasn't in the shot. Hawks? This had to be Carlton Hawks, the newest enfant terrible of Tinseltown. I'd read about him. Mailroom boy makes good. Nice to know it was still possible to get to be a director armed with only an encyclopedic knowledge of postal charges. Stay hmm. out of the way, surfer boy. I'll deal with you later. Surfer boy? Okay, I don't like this guy. Yeah, okay. Um, short pause here. Okay, so this is Hawks, that's a man, another man, a woman, and a boy. Boy? I thought that was a man. Well, let's talk around with people. Hi there, George Stobart. Uh-huh, yeah. Haiku McEwen. <laughs> Haiku McEwen, what a funny name. Is your name really Haiku? Yeah. It was my mom's idea, okay? When I was born, I was so small. And perfectly formed, I reminded her of a Japanese poem. 
Well, I guess it could have been worse. She could have called you Limerick. That's my middle name. Haiku Limerick McEwen. Interesting name. This must be a flower child. Did you always want to be an actor? I don't think of what I do as acting, man. You're not alone. It's more like I'm the voice of my generation. What I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying for the kids on the street. Which is what? I'm crap, I'm going nowhere? Huh? What are you saying, man? His brain is burned out. Stobart, get out of shot. Positions, everybody. I'll get a flip chart and explain it to you later, Haiku. <laughs> Where's Haiku? That, so that's the Haiku, star. Haiku, baby, are you ready? Okay, man. Uh, which scene is this? You've been captured by Silver's accomplice, Pirate Babs, who's fallen in love with you. Okay, that's people, Pirate Babs. Top of page 76, Sharon. What about my beat speech? It's been cut. Everybody ready? Up to speed. Oh, boy. Quiet on the set. Okay, let's make magic. Oh, please. And... Action! Yeah, sure. Why don't you forget that dumb old squire and his bunch of merry men? Can't you see we were made for each other? I know, but Squire Trelawney saved my life, Captain Babs. Why, if it hadn't have been for him, that giant octopus would have made mincemeat out of me. But right now he thinks you're a traitor. He's locked you out of the stockade, Jimbo. That 20-foot-high wall with spikes might have kept out Silver's man, but it ain't gonna stop me. Oh, Jimbo. <laughs> <laughs> and cut! Good heavy breathing, Sharon. Natch, I'm a pro. Yeah, that was useless. Really horrible. Did you get the heavy breathing, Flash? Did I ever, boss? We should have made this movie in 3D. Haiku, you were great. We're setting up for the stunt now, so get a bite to eat. Okay, so they're going to make a stunt now. Savage, on set, damn it! Okay, the stunt man doesn't even the stunt double doesn't even look close to this what this guy looks like. Shouldn't he be wearing a wig or something? Oh, oh, pancakes, buns. Syrup. Oh, I love this stuff. Love I all this stuff. I didn't want another one of the pancakes in my pocket. All right, pick up some syrup then, and some buns. The bun was so stale it felt like a small rock. Nice. That's exactly what we need. As you know, we have a bun, we have some syrup, and we have a pancake. Well, you can't eat pancakes without syrup now, can you? Did you make it sticky? Yeah, nice and sticky. There's a bush. I'd seen a lot of strange Whoa. things on this island, but here was a bush that was buzzing. Yeah, buzzing. Yeah, okay. Hi, I'm George Stobart. My name's Harris. Most people call me Flash. You're the cameraman, right? That's right. Why'd they call you Flash? You used to be a stills photographer? Nope. I decided not to pursue the subject. Yeah, I don't really want to know exactly why they call you Flash. What do you think of Haiku McEwen? What's the thing? The kid will have earned more by the time his balls drop than I learn in a lifetime. Good luck to him. Oh, okay, so he's that young. Wow. So this must be the stunt double. Hi, George Stobart. Hello, mate. You're English, right? No, me, you don't miss much, do you? Bert Savage. Oh, Mr. Savage. How long have you been in the movie business? Flipping years, mate. Absolutely flipping years. I was in the army before that. Thought to myself, you've been risking your bleeding neck every day. Why not cash in on it, like? So you became a stuntman, just like that? Nah, of course not. I had to do the training first. <laughs> what training does a stuntman do? First, they told me to stand in the road. Then, they run me down. Straight up. Drove at me with a car. I couldn't believe it. I was up on the bonnet and over the other side before I realized he wasn't stopping. Then they threw me downstairs a bit and gives me a certificate. Wow, that was really harsh. Did you ever work with Carol Climax? The dirty dashend? I'll say. 
flipping princess, mate. I heard she was very beautiful. Mind you, she acted like one too. Ordering this, demanding that. Oh, nice to know. Did you ever meet Bertrand Ubier? Meet him? No. I saw him a few times, though. He didn't like his wife being in films. Hmm. Do you think Ubier murdered his wife? I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Mind you, there were plenty of people who could have done her in. I thought the public loved her. Yeah, but people who knew her saw the other side. That's interesting, but now we know it was Cossack who did it anyway, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Would you like this pot of syrup? No thanks, mate. I don't like the stuff. What? You don't? Would you like a pancake, Bert? Don't mind if I do. Oh, here you go, Bert. The pancake oozed maple syrup all over Bert's chins. Ew, you put bloody syrup on that pancake. Now it's messed me all up. Of course, you can't eat it without that. This, this is just how it works, Bert. I'm sorry, Bert, I'm going to be a bit of an asshole to you. There's some bees in here. And what does bees like? What do bees like? Do, does do. Those hornets were not pleased. Good. Ooh, they are angry. Ah, <laughs> oh, poor Bert. <laughs> oh. And she swooned. Okay, the next scene is down on the beach. This is where Hawkins finds the treasure in the cave of the crabs. Would those be giant killer crabs by any chance? Giant mutant killer crabs with attitude. How radical, man. <laughs> there it was. The rock I'd seen from the camel's hump. Now that I was close up, I could make out a small cave near the top of the pillar. I guess it's that thing there. Oh, they pushed that thing all the way down here? My god. That's some serious work. Hey, you! Trouble! Oh, who? Me? What now? I want you to stay right where I can keep an eye on you. I'm not one of your lackeys, Hawks. I go where I like. Not here you don't. The movie company has rented this island for the duration. You're trespassing. Do as you're told or you're gone. Damn, you're annoying. Is he biting his nails? That was a big chunk he took out of that. Uh, let's see now. There's, there's quite a lot of stuff we can choose from here. Zombies. You know what the locals call this place, don't you? No, but I guess you're going to tell me. Zombie Island. Zombies? A crazed gleam came into his <laughs> eye. <laughs> I thought he'd like that. Writers. Get me makeup. I want zombie pirates in this movie by the end of today. Oh, Pirates of the Caribbean then. Oh boy. What's the name of the movie? Are you trying to be funny? No. It's Treasure Island. The it only it is? I ever read twice. He's actually making Treasure Island with zombie pirates now and mutant killer crabs with an I attitude. Don't call any girls in Treasure Island. Got to think box office. People like that kind of thing. What <laughs> other changes have you made to the story? Just a few minor details. You haven't written out Long John Silver. Are you questioning my integrity as an artist? Yeah. Of course Silver's still in it. We've even hung on to Captain Flint. His parrot. His trained attack falcon. Why do you think Blind what? Hugh's blind? That's kind of brutal. Did you say you've changed the ending of the story? That's right. Do they find the treasure? Yeah, but that comes later. After they've escaped a volcanic eruption. A volcano? Sure. Krakatoa. All the millions spent on a movie, and nobody thinks to buy an atlas. Yeah, you're on the wrong side of the world, dipshit. Who's playing Jim Hawkins? Haiku McEwen. Oh, don't tell me you've never heard of him. I don't go to the movies too often. Jeez. Haiku is only the hottest teen star in Hollywood. That's why we're on such a tight schedule. Gotta film the close-ups before he hits puberty. Wow. That's some serious thinking you've done there. You don't there. look happy. Why should I be happy? Look at that cave. It's supposed to be where the treasure is. So? Look at it. It's crap. Does that look like the sort of place anybody would hide treasure? I should have had props build me a proper damn cave. A cinematic cave. 
What do you mean, a cinematic cave? One with drama. Danger. One that looks like the mouth of a big stone skull would be cool. But I'd settle for drama and danger. Well, then pack everything up and go back to Hollywood, then. Who's the leading lady? Don't you recognize her? That's Sharon Kowalski. Oh, right. I'd never heard of her. <laughs> I was talking to Mr. Savage, the stuntman. Is he all right? What makes you say that? He's not making any sense. The guy's English. Nice going. Why don't you use that cave up on the rock pillar at the end of the beach? We don't have a stuntman anymore. Hey, I'll do the stunt. I appreciate the offer, but if you fall, you'll sue us. No, I won't. Everybody hear that? I hide it. Good enough, we're covered. <laughs> Got any experience? Death-defying leaps, desperate fist fights, getting caught in explosions, you name it. Okay, people, move out. We're shooting the scene at the end of the beach. No, we're not. The camera's still bogged down. Shoot, I forgot about that. No go, Stobart. We'll have to use this cave after all. Damn. So we'll have to work something out here, I guess. Um, I think I should have talked to Bert before that. Uh, I'm wondering how he sounds now. After all the bees. Hi, Bert. Don't you eye me. Fine friend you turned out of. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> sorry, Bert. Really, I'm sorry. What's it like to work with Carlton Hawk? Flipping misery, mate. <laughs> oh, Bert, what's wrong? You got a bloody nerve. If I didn't know better, I'd have thought you gave me that pancake just so them ornits would go for me. Oh, Bert, you've wounded me. How can you think that? Well, by looking at the evidence. He's smart. I don't know why you still want to be a stunt man anyway. It's all I know, isn't it? If I don't do this, what do I do? Well, how about being a stunt coordinator? Being a what? You stand around in a big jacket and a baseball cap. Telling the stunt people what to do. I can do that. Hey, you've done the job for years and you're not dead. That's got to be good for morale. Well, I don't know. You get your own <laughs> megaphone. I'll do it. George Stobart, international adventurer <laughs> and roaming careers advisor. Sounds like a good plan. I think that's better for, for Bert anyway. What films have you worked on in the past? Remember Death Stalker of the 10th grade? The psychotic biker what crashed into the school bus? <laughs> that was me. Well, what about they played to Satan? I was the bloke in the hospital scene. You know, the one who caught fire, fell through the flipping skylight. I don't think I caught those. <laughs> Holy hell, he has had a, quite an adventurous life. Must be cool getting to travel the world like this. Yeah, nice here, isn't it? My barrel used to love the seaside. Day out at Clacton. Bloody smashing. A pint of jelly deals washed down with a bottle of brown. Quickly on a big wheel and a stroll around the town. Of course, them days, you could live like a flipping king on ten bob a night. Tom Bowler, frothy coffee at the cafe of the prom. You know, I don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Too bad, George. I, I did. a great idea. How about you dress up as Jim Hawkins and climb up to that cave over there? What cave? That cave? You must think I'm balmy. I did me back in being chased by them ornits over that flaming stockade wall. No way am I going up there. Well, that narrowed the field. Oh, good to know. Uh, I think we have to take care of this camera stuff. I'm not interested in talking with that idiot. It seems like the camera is stuck here for now. So we need to get it out. Somehow. Mr. Hawk <coughs> doesn't like that cave. He says it isn't cinematic enough. Well, that's just too tough. The camera's bogged down in the sand. If he wants the shot done today, it'll have to be that cave. Hmm. There's a pretty good cave over on the other side of the bay. The one up in that finger of rock? We'd need a stuntman. You got a stuntman. We ain't got no stuntman. Bird injured his back doing that dumb wall jump. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm going to do that. Don't you worry. Flash? Yep. We can't film at the Needle Rock because the camera's bogged down, right? You got it, champ. So, why can't we use the portable camera instead? You know, that's a pretty smart idea. So? Um, there was nothing else I wanted to... Okay, we have that. The handheld is, is a possibility. Yeah, we're not moving that thing. Especially not that with that guy sitting. That camera wasn't going anywhere. Well, if we have the, the idea of the handheld camera, that's good. Let's see if we can 
Yes, we can. I've been talking to the cameraman. He's got a portable camera. So? So you can use the cave in that rock pillar at the end of the beach. That's a dramatic cave if ever I saw one. We ain't got a stabilized harness for it. The camera will wobble. Did D.W. Griffiths have a stabilized harness when he made Birth of a Nation? I don't You're even know right, what that is. It. Hitchcock, Wells, none of them needed one. I For know crying those. out loud, Sam Raimi stabilized his camera on a plank. Props, get me a plank. We're gonna wing it. Hot dog. We're gonna do a cinema verite pirate movie. Nice. Seems George, like we fixed it. Get to wardrobe. We're gonna make you a star. On my way. <laughs> International adventurer George Stobuck, now also a movie star. Well, stuntman. At least. I hope they pay for this. I mean, it must be insanely expensive traveling around like George does. Ready when you are, Mr. Hawks. Damn, George, you're looking good. Wow. No, love those pantaloons. <laughs> Holy hell. Hey! There it is! We found the pirate treasure! It was the stone which Ketch had captured from the Spanish! The Eagle Stone! Aha! Returning to the shaman's village, Nico finds the village burning, but no sign of George. He came to Cuaramonte and found that George had left a message with Conchita. He'd already left for the Indian village, so I hurried to catch up with him. When I arrived, I found a scene of desolation. Oh my. So, the car sack has been here? Oh, there's not much left to this place. Yeah, not much at all. And there's sunglasses. These sunglasses are George's. George, where are you? Hey, Titipoco! You little freaking scary dude. Titipoco, I'm almost glad to see you. Almost? He's not trying to kill us, at least. Oh shit, he is. <laughs> oh, I, I should whack you. I should give you a good flick around the ear hole, you little fucker. You little asshole. What exactly. Are you responsible for this? Uh, and where's Georges? Have you seen him? Uh, uh, uh. He was pointing to the remains of a burned out hut. I should definitely give you a flick around the ear hole, you little fucker. I just need to save the game. So one moment, guys. Yeah, I've just saved the game. Done. He's pointing... this little fucker is pointing over here somewhere. Hey, smashed lantern? It was a smashed lantern, probably the cause of this destruction. I didn't need the lantern since it was still daylight. Besides, it was broken. But here's... oh, it's a stone. That's what we need. It was too hot to pick up. Okay, well then we'll just pour some water on it. No. Well, you tried, Nico. You tried. I just didn't have the strength to tip that barrel. Yeah, I knew you'd go all pouty mouth on me. <sighs> what happened to George? These are George's sheds, right? Has he been here? <gasps> George! Where is he now? George. What's that? What's that? It looks like the stone we bought from Paris, but it's different. Yes, it has a carving of an eagle. That clinches it. Georges must have found this stone in the Caribbean and managed to hide the stone when the village was attacked by Karzak's men. I hope to God that Georges was all right. Good, that means that we have all the stones here. Where's Georges? Georges has been here, right? He was pointing to the smoldering remains of a hut. Oh no, George's not dead. Hey, Shorty, make yourself useful and help me with this barrel. Yeah, you can do at least something. Nice. Thanks. 
That's what we needed. I recognize that. It's the Coyote Stone. Okay, now we have all three stones, at least. That's good. That's what we needed. I had the Coyote and Jaguar Stones. Titipoko had the Eagle, according to the Shaman. That's all we needed to deal with Tezcatlipoca. Pity he hadn't any ideas for dealing with Kalzak. Yeah, too bad. What is it? Where are you pointing? Yeah, exactly. Where are you pointing? Oh, okay. I guess that's where we're going now. So... And he's coming with us, that's good. Hurry up. After following the jungle paths for a few hours... Wow, that was a long walk. And we're at the pyramid. Well, we're getting close to the end. And with that, I'll cut the episode right here, and I'll probably finish the game in the next episode or so, I think. I think so, at least. It might be one or two more episodes at most. Shouldn't be much more than that. Well, in, in any case, thank you so much for watching, and if you like what you saw, hit that like button and do leave a comment. And with that, I'm signing off. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys around.